Hey, what's up? It's Thy Kusk, and I'm gonna be talking to you about them warped tours. I went uh, four days ago at the July 12th date in Mansfield, the Xfinity Center there. There are two Xfinity Centers, and both of them have warped tours. There's one in Hartford, and there's one in Mansfield. And, um, yeah, I went to the Mansfield one. <laughs> um, I told my friend that would be at the Xfinity Center date, and that friend went to the Connecticut Xfinity Center, and they're just like, Sam, I don't see you. And I'm like, I'm not there. But, yeah, I, actually, I had a pretty fun time at this year's Warped Tour, to be honest. Uh, uh let, let's talk about it. <laughs> Basically, this wasn't, like, the worst Warped Tour I went to, but it wasn't the best. You know, I've been to six now. You know, the worst being 2016, which I can make a whole entire video on, actually, to this day. Like, if you want me to make a shitpost video on why I hate 2016's Warped Tour, like, please comment down below. Like, I will literally start screaming to the top of my lungs because I'm still angry at it. And I hope it doesn't happen for 2018 or, like, years afterwards because that, that date just sucked. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I don't, like... And it wasn't like 2014 or 2015, because, you know, 2014, 2015 had at least decent weather. Um, it didn't rain all day. You know, 2015 it rained, but it wasn't all day. You know, so that's basically it. You know, 2017 is just chilling in the middle. You know, it was a good experience, but it wasn't the best experience. So, yeah, that, that's what's up. Um, basically, I think I my views changed on something when I went to Warp Tour. You know, I did learn something, at least. And that was basically that, you know, maybe politics and, like, different cultures, you know, th th those things are not a bad thing to put in places, you know. After what happened last year and what happened in June at this, at, like, this year's warp Tour, I was like, dude, I don't think that we should be doing this. Like, you know, now I'm just, like, not okay with last year's because, you know, last year was very one-sided. If you don't know what happened last year, they introduced Rock for Life to go on and Rock for Life is a pro-life organization, and they did not have anything else, you know, they didn't have a pro-choice group to, you know, you know, debate them and whatnot. You know, that that's what went down in 2016, okay? You know, that's, like, really the only thing that I did not like about it, you know? They did not have a pro-choice group <laughs> to be like, hey, you know what, I don't, I disagree with you, <laughs> instead of people just going up to them and say, hey, you know what, I, I actually disagree with you. And, you know, 2017 did bring, like, War on Women on, so, you know, I'm like, hey, you know what, Things are getting a little more balanced. If I, you know, later this year, you know, the Dickies, you know, some dude born in 1957 decided to tell a minor he wanted to fuck her. And, you know, there's a way to tell an offensive joke. He did not tell it in, in the right way. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, now in upcoming years, Lyman should just have, like, older bands sign, like, you know, a waiver saying... Um, or an agreement actually saying, hey, you know what, you should just not tell the minors you want to fuck them in any way, okay, because last year when someone did that, it got out of control and, you know, they, they got a feisty protester and they got feisty with the protester and things got a little weird, <laughs> okay, there, there is a way, alright, to, to tell that joke and be a dick about it, alright, but you gotta target someone that Warped Horror, you know, bred, all right? Warped Horror bred Jake McElfresh, Austin Jones, and Davi Vanity, and these kids know it, all right? Especially with Jake McElfresh and um, Austin Jones, because those cases happened in 2014 and 2015. Um, obviously, Jake McElfresh happened in 2014, you know, Austin was just 2015, you know? So these kids remember, you know, these names pretty well. Uh, so you could have just, like, picked up a, an acoustic guitar that is less broken and more tuned than mine and just, like, you know, strum it and say, hey, I'm um, Jake McElfresh. You know, you could have done something like that, but no, you know, you just, like, went straight in for the kill. And, you know, that's not what you do. You just made someone feel uncomfortable cause, because they know who these people are. And these parents probably think that Warped Tour does breed pedophiles, so good job. Um, so, you know, there, there are right and wrong ways to tell jokes. Um... Oh uh, shit. So, <laughs> alright, that stayed. So, you know, obviously, you know, the Dickies did not tell their joke, right? And people kind of got pissed, you know? When you're in a place where you're advertising your band, no matter how old or new they are, new your band is, uh, you should try to keep your, uh, let's see, humor to an Attila or mindless self-indulgence level and not have it go past the snorting coke off your boobs part, okay? Th that's just where the Dickies got it wrong, alright? You know, if you're gonna make fun of pedophiles, do not, you know, put yourself in the situation. 
you know, take a hit at Austin Jones, Jake McElfresh, or Davi Vanity because th th these kids, you know, don't want to deal with them ever again. All right, so, you know, I was like, th so after, you know, all that, you know, I'm like, dude, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't a good idea, and obviously what would happen to VidCon, you know, garbage human, you know, we're not going to talk about that, you know, maybe we should, like, refrain from this shit, because obviously people are going to get into some, you know, fights and deba debacles and whatnot, but, you know, after going there, you know, you kind of learn from other people, and you might actually find stuff that you actually like. You know, my boyfriend likes Fit for a King, and I actually saw some of their set, and I actually kind of enjoyed their set, you know, and I got to, well, I tried to um, film their Crazy Circle Pit, but I couldn't, you know, film their Crazy Circle Pit, and I epically failed. So, you know, I, I feel like these places actually can bring enlightenment to other people, okay? But, you know, you gotta embrace that in the first place. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's why I'm actually pretty okay with all the angry music now at Warped. Um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't at first, but now I am. Anyways, let's get on to the bands that I saw, alright? First band I saw that day was Neck Deep in the Amphitheater. I hated that the main stages were in the Amphitheater. I also hated how the wall was right in front of the entrance to, like, 80% of the actual tour. You know, most of the stages, most of the tents. Um, that, that was fun to walk by a ton of people trying to take pictures of the wall and you were just trying to find merch tents. But anyways, uh, you know, first band I saw was Neck Deep, but I technically just heard them, you know, so it's kind of, I kind of just ignore them and I was like, okay, I didn't actually, you know, try to see Neck Deep, but I heard them. And you know, they sung the rain song when <laughs> the delay happened, which was fun, um, and that actually I found funny. You know, they're actually pretty good live. I'll give them that. I'm not really a big Neck Deep fan. I know I'm saying that I'm like, you know, I know I say that I'm like someone who likes light music and that I'm a little pop punk kid. Um, but you know, I just never got into Neck Deep, okay? I never got into the story so far either, all right? So don't hate me on that. Um, next band I saw was Jewel Vera. Obviously I wanted to see these guys, but I was kind of hesitant. I just wanted to check them out because I did enjoy their music off of Spotify. But the, but their music did make me emotional. Whenever I heard them, I cried. So I was like, dude, do I really want to go see their set? Because I'm gonna like ball my eyes out for no apparent reason and it would be like a nice boppy song and someone's just gonna like come at me going, why are you crying? And I'm like, dude, please, please don't. Please, just, 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 just let me be emotional at the moment, you know? Because I heard Jewel Vera when I was, like, in a shit mood. So, you know, I heard their set, and they, they were actually, uh, they actually put on a good set. Uh, I did meet them before I saw Ailstorm, and they were pretty chill. They signed a poster for me, and I'm really happy about that. They were more chill than I thought they would be. Basically, I got caught in an hour last night line, and one of the members was, I obviously don't know, uh, which guitar he played. I just knew he played a guitar in the band. But basically he was hang like, you know, handing out headphones to people saying, hey, check out our music. You know, you're gonna see out you're gonna meet our last night, but do you wanna check out Jewel Vera? So you know that was what was basically going on. That was just when I saw that I'm like, I am in the hour last night line. Shit. I don't have anything to um for hour last night to sign. I'm not really into hour last night. I had a dream about them once that they were living in a Tedeschi's and I was best friends with them. But, um, <laughs> you know, when it comes to, like, real life, my listenings, I was not into Our Last Night. And, you know, I tried to just shimmy away from that line. And I ended up talking to Jake and he was pretty chill. And, yeah, that was pretty interesting. He was one of the guitarists. I I'm considering bass a guitar. So, you know, maybe the bassist was actually hand handing out the headphones. So, yeah. But anyways, um... I believe he does guitar and synths, and basically, you know, I got in a conversation with him, and he was pretty chill, and I got to buy his CDs, and that's where I got the poster and whatnot, and they were really nice, so they were much nicer than I thought they were. And then after that, I saw Dance Gavin Dance. I did not meet them. I, like, I was in the crowd for Jewel Vera. I had to leave when Dance Gavin Dance was on. I just chilled in a VIP box and saw them from there because that pit was hectic because, you know, the Xfinity Center, um, amphitheater pits very small and a bunch of people were trying to get in there so the entrances were blocked and I was just like dude I don't want to be in this pit it is really sweaty and gross and everyone's like packed in there and everyone's smoking and it's I don't want to be in here <laughs> I'm uncomfortable so I sat from afar and just heard most of their set and so I didn't catch the Tillian body rolls but I caught the Tillian so you know um it was pretty cool 
they were they were pretty good live. And then I left that and went to the Monster Mew and Energy Pit. And this is where I found out that there was a delay for most of the stages because it was raining. Oh boy, that was that was a fun experience. Um, I saw Fit for a King because of that, and then I heard Silverstein. Then I saw Silent Planet. I did meet Garrett twice, <laughs> aka the lead singer. I bumped into him when I was looking at the Silent Planet merch, and poor thing, he was not wearing shoes, and that was concerning. Like I, I list Silent Planet as the best set of that day because th this dude was not wearing shoes. Okay, like it was downpouring out the the whole entire time. I saw the lead singer of Silent Planet. He was not wearing shoes, and it it, it deeply concerned me. Okay. I don't know if I accidentally stepped on him or offended him that day, and I'm sorry if I did, and I'm sorry Silent Planet fans that I did that, but um, you know, like, I bumped into him, he did give me, like, he did hug me and stuff, so it was pretty okay, you know, he was a pretty chill dude, he was very warm, you know, I'm like, dude, I, I wish I was as warm as you, you know, I, I, I have a resting bitch face, so, you know, you, good job, okay, you, you, you're pretty chill. But anyways, yeah, when Silent Planet went on, he, he was barefoot, okay? He was barefoot the whole entire time I saw him. Like, I'm still not over it. He It was downpouring. And when you see the clip at the end of this video, you can see it was downpouring, okay? And he was running, all right? He was running around the stage. He, all right, he was in, he was just running around, okay? He jumped off the stage, went in the crowd, then he went back on the stage. And it was raining and he was barefoot. The rest of the members were not barefoot, okay? They had shoes on. I'm not sure if the drummer was barefoot, but I know at least the guitarists and bassist, well, or the guitarist and bassist, I don't really remember. And I was in the front row, but basically, um, you know, I'm sorry, you don't really pay attention to bands. I don't pay attention to the members. I pay attention to the music, and I pay attention to the vibe of the music. So I'm sorry about that, okay? Anyway, so, um, you know, the, these members <laughs> were wearing shoes, except for the lead singer, and I felt deeply concerned. Um... So yeah, I still feel deeply concerned for him. Uh, I I hope I hope he's all right, <laughs> but like walking on pavement and whatnot without shoes. Uh, so yeah, I hope his feet are okay. And obviously, you know, I heard Silverstein before that. I don't know if I mentioned that because I got caught in the he Garrett wasn't wearing shoes thing. But um, yeah, Silverstein were pretty good. They sang Massachusetts. <laughs> um, obviously, it was before Silent Planet. Um, basically, they, they sang Massachusetts, which I was pretty happy about. Um, obviously, I do pay attention to the music, but I don't pay attention to the lyrics sometimes. I did try to cover Massachusetts before when I tried to sing, so obviously I did know some of the lyrics to that song, and I was just really happy they played it, since it was really the only Silverstein song I knew, and that's kind of ironic because I live in Massachusetts, and they played this in Massachusetts. So yeah, and I... And I learned that I know more than more than that song by Silverstein when they were playing. I'm like, hey, I know that song. I know that song. You know, so I didn't know half their set, which was pretty is which was a pretty interesting discovery. You know, I knew their newer song and another song, so yeah. And then there was Massachusetts. Um, my friend Brad Laplante from Square One TV uh, does like Silverstein. He did say that they were the best band on Warped Tour this year, <laughs> and you know. Their set was pretty lit. Uh, obviously, I wasn't in the crowd for it, but I did hear it, and they were pretty good live, so there we go. And obviously, after I was in the Monster Mutant Energy Pit, I went to the full sale, and I saw the rest of Bad Omen's set, and then I went to their signing. Um, you know, what I've seen from their set, they were pretty good. Um, and that was talking to someone, talked to people in line from there. Um, that was pretty interesting. And then Boston Manor went on, okay? And I was meaning to check out Boston Manor. I do have Be Nothing Now on CD, which I'm pretty happy about. I was going to get the vinyl, but obviously I want the really expensive pressing of it, which is half half transparent blue, half white. And obviously I know it's going to cost 100 bucks, so don't even go there. But they were really good live. They had, a pr they had, they had energy, all right? They were like, yeah, everyone get close. And it was just, it was pretty interesting. They were pretty happy. Um, ironic, I saw Boston Manor. It, it would be funny if I saw them in Boston. I saw them in Massachusetts. Boston is our capital. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, and then I saw Ailstorm. I got to meet them. Uh, they were pretty chill. I found my friend there. My friend wanted to see a rapper there called G. Moski, so he was mostly, um, not seen by me. Uh, 
And he got to meet him four times, which was pretty fun. Which, well, it actually does sound fun, you know. That was the main person we came to see, and that happened, so... I don't know. I feel happy for him, to be honest. Um, basically, you know, we met up uh, at the Ailstorm line, and we took pictures with Ailstorm together. Not together, but, like, we took pictures with Ailstorm. You know, I took his picture, and he took my picture, so it was pretty cool. Um, then we saw Ail... Well, obviously we saw Ailstorm. <laughs> Oops. I heard Microwave, and they were amazing, okay? I always wanted to see Microwave. The only vinyl I bought there was Much Love because I've always wanted that on vinyl. And honestly, they had energy and they were they were great, okay? I think most of that that was the reason why pop punk kids came and I was one of the pop punk kids, okay? So just see just hearing them. I saw them from afar and just seeing them was pretty lit. Um then I saw Fire from the Gods and damn, you know, the rock critic um, attracted me to them because he basically, I'm not sure if he roasted Of Mice and Men or Suicide Silence with Narrative, but he roasted one of those bands with saying Narrative was better than your album, so shut up. And so I had to check out Narrative and I did enjoy it. Um, then I saw, heard they were on Warped Tour. I'm like, dude, you know, if I, if I have the time to check them out, I'll check them out. So I did and then I met them and yeah, that was pretty cool. They were pretty chill. Um, and obviously, like what, like I said in the line, someone had a double zero um, septum ring and someone took a picture of it, <laughs> which was pretty cool. Um, I, I don't know, I found that funny. And then I heard Big D from that line, and I heard the rest of Big D set, and they were amazing. I always wanted to hear Big D, too, you know, ever, you know, in 2015 I wanted to hear them. I discovered them in 2015. I had a massive ska phase, don't question it, when I was 16. So basically I was like, dude, Big D's lit, you know, my girlfriend's on drugs, man, I'm so weird. Why did I have a scuff face when I was 16? This makes zero sense. No, I think I was 15. You get the point. I had a weird scuff face in high school. So basically, you know, I was down to hear Big D, and I'm glad I heard their set. Um, then I met Microwave, you know, I J-Load into their line. <laughs> I, I show J-Load a Microwave, they are pretty sweet. You know, they were, they were chill with that. You know, they didn't, like, yell at me. <laughs> you know, th thank you, Microwave. Um, you, you guys were chill. Uh, so, yeah. Th that was basically it. I had time to see Creeper, too, but I knew I was gonna walk into their last two songs because how the stages were, um, messed up by the rain. Obviously, there was a ten-minute delay, which kind of messed up the stages, so the full sail stages were way off because they did not have a sister pairing stage with them. So I was afraid that I was just going to walk into their last songs, and I'm like, dude, I already saw a Creeper, so I'm going to go home and sleep. And, but basically, you know, I didn't go home and sleep because all of the rest of my friends were seeing Attila and all those people, and I did not like Attila. I don't like Attila, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that deeply offends you, but I do not. And, you know, I just chilled in the car for the rest of the, rest of the time and kind of fell asleep. I didn't fall asleep, though. I ended up in a video call. <laughs> but anyways, I did chill afterwards in the car, you know. And that was it. I saw what pressing got in much love, and I love it. It is mint green, Easter yellow, and transparent yellow tricolor, which I enjoy. It's much better than um, the white with black splatter, which I wanted probably cost 100 bucks now. Um, anyways, I'm going to shut up. Uh, the video I'm going to show you afterwards, it is, um, like I said, it does have um, all, like, it does have a title card with all the bands it does exclude. But it does exclude Big D and the Kids Table. I forgot to add that. All right, when I saw Big D and the Kids Table, obviously I saw two songs in the crowd. I got very invested with both of those songs. So that, that's what's up with that and why I do not have Big D footage. So yeah, enjoy the footage. I'll check with you guys later. Thank you for watching this. I know this was very long. I don't know how to make the short, so oop. Peace out. <laughs> hey, um, I'm at the Warp Tour with some people. The Warp Tour. The Warp Tour. The uh, Warp Tour. What are you the trying? Tour of Warp. Yes. The, 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 this is um, a beautiful human being. <laughs> and oh, shit, I'm beautiful. Fuck. Yeah, you, you are too, dude. Beautiful, beautiful human beings. Yes, all of you are. <laughs> yeah, all the beautiful there's a, there's human beings. Wow. Um, I wrote free dads on my arms, but I, I think I'd have to force someone to, um, like, show you that so I'm Why not going to show you. you know, it has a life proof case This, this arm says for, oh I fucked up. This arm says free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, this arm says dads I'm going to be your free dad at Warp Tour Mansfield 2K17 yeah, hit dad. me up. Dad? 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 dad?
Dad, where have you been? You left like 10 years ago to go get milk and you just never Where's that pack of cigarettes you went to get? <laughs> Me and Brittany make jokes like that all the time. I bet. I was like, when's your dad coming? to say that um, my boyfriend got uh, vid me so uh, I'm gonna throw that in the link down below and you should totally follow him so yeah his name's Austin he's pretty cool he's in a, he's in a couple bands so yeah hit him up tell leave him weird comments okay I think his um username is walrus underscore per Okay, so yeah, hit him up, alright? Peace out. <laughs> no, no, this is a peace sign.